So I come from a Christian background. I'm the oldest of five. During the birth, my mom had a difficulty in complication, which one of the reasons why you can see one of my eyelids is a little bit smaller than the other one. My family immigrated to the United States at the age of 13. So I didn't speak any English. I didn't have any friends. And on top of that, this is when all the insecurities that I thought that uh, started to surface. I remember skipping a keyboarding class as a freshman in high school because I was so embarrassed to stand in front of a group of 25 students. So I come from a Christian family. I mean, we read the Bible, went to Ukraine, church. Ukraine, right? Ukraine, yeah. I had, we had no television and no telephone. This is how Christian we were. I mean, very devoted. Soccer team, uh, soccer was the only thing that we were permitted once a week to play, but it was very, very devout. And so I grew up learning about God and everything. And there in the United States here at the age of 13, insecurities because of my physical appearance. And on the top of that, because my optical nerve was damaged, I had migraine headaches every time my head got exposed to the sun. I knew that committing suicide is going to land me in a bad place. And so I started to develop these chronic, chronic insecurities, suicidal tendencies, where I begged God to create an accident where I will die. And so I escaped few accidents without a scratch. And my parents, now they know that, but at that time they did not know that. My parents are the best parents in the world. I had a great family. I had a friend. I had a church. But these insecurities, because of my physical appearance, and that's before the social media um, creeped in. And, and I remember, you know, I, I prayed with you many times during those days where you would uh, ask people to play, place their hands on TV. <laughs> my television, black and white television, was so greasy <laughs> because my hands were going there all the time. I prayed for God to heal my eyes. It wasn't because I have a problem with the vision. Out of four siblings and both parents, I'm the only guy without glasses. So I have really good vision. I don't have a problem with the vision. It was my self-esteem that was connected to my physical appearance that I had a problem with. And so after many, many attempts of prayer for healing, I started to lock myself in the room and read the word. And God started to change something in me. And he said this, he said, Adam felt ashamed of his body not because he gained weight he didn't feel ashamed because somebody else showed up who was better looking than Adam Adam felt ashamed is because of what he ate and God says you've been eating from the fruit of your self-image instead of my image I said Lord but I read your word he says you're reading my word you're not eating my word and at the age of 14, I started to lock myself in the room for 40 to 30 minutes every day and not read the Bible, but eat the Bible. And the Lord convicted me and he said, stop looking in the mirror in the bathroom to find who you are. He said, what you see in that bathroom is a skin stretched over a skeleton. He said, what you see in this mirror is your true identity. The crazy, Pastor Benny, the crazy part, today I still have the same body. Yeah, but none of you are distracted with my eyes. And the reason why is because I'm not distracted. People don't ask me today, you know, what, what happened to you? Did you? Have you been through an accident? You know, what, what happened to you? Did you have a surgery or something? People no longer ask me of that. Whereas before, that was the only question every person asked. They didn't even ask me my name. And when you're 13 and 14 and you're aware of something is wrong with you and people ask you about it, like that just, that just hurts. Today nobody does. I'm still the same guy. Well, on the outside. On the inside, I'm a completely different person. And the Holy Spirit, as a teenager, at the age of 13, at the age of 15, at the age of 16, 17, 18, 19, I started to go into my room, lock myself, and eat this word and then I started to experience become aware not of my physical appearance but of his spiritual presence and I really want to just encourage every single young person there's something better than taking your life it's laying it down oh. laying it down Vladimir thank you young man you can go to your seat and 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 listen listen God has a call on you. Go for it. Okay? Vladimir, give me a second. 
uh, why don't you pray for them? If you're watching us right now and you're in a similar situation, maybe you already have something loaded, you have a gun loaded, you got pills maybe that you're taking or cutting yourself because you don't know who you are. Maybe you've been abandoned, moved from foster home to a foster home. Or maybe your own parents disowned you and called you with name. Maybe you've, you're a victim of molestation or rape and somebody messed with you sexually. Or perhaps you look at yourself in the mirror every single day and you call yourself fat, ugly, worthless and that you have no purpose and you have no meaning. There's a reason why my eyes are still the same. I believe God wants to use what He did with me to encourage you. It doesn't mean that you're going to be a preacher but you will live a life of meaning and you will live a life of purpose. But you don't find purpose in a university. You don't find purpose in a degree. You find purpose in God's presence. And when you find His presence, you find meaning to your life. You can be the wisest and the richest person like Solomon. And he still said, life is vanity and vanity. Because without God's presence, you don't find your purpose. And when you find your purpose, listen, you find, you begin to appreciate yourself. Not because you love yourself, but because you love Jesus. And so I'm just going to pray right now for anybody there who are maybe, maybe your kids just need to watch this and need to share this and need to tell your kids to just watch this part and the whole service. I believe that God is going to encounter some of you. I believe some of you are going to stop eating from the forbidden tree of your physical appearance and the comparison you get on social media and the comments you get from people who are bullying you. You're going to stop eating from that because that's making you sick. And that's making you aware of your nakedness which makes you feel ashamed of yourself when in reality all you need is to eat from the tree of life which tells you who you are in Jesus and then you will be aware of the presence of God in your life who's always there in your life and who's calling to you right now and says Adam, Lucy, where he says John, where he says come to me where you at. I want to talk to you. I want to be with you. Let's just stretch our hands with them. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every single young person right now, God, that the enemy is bringing the thoughts of death and suicide and tells them that their life has no meaning and their life is worthless. And if I pray for those who contemplated suicide already, I come against that spirit of death. I come against that spirit of destruction. I come against you, Pharaoh, in Jesus' mighty name. And I command you to loose that young person, loose their mind, loose their sleep, loose their thought pattern in Jesus' mighty name. Devil, your time has expired. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God, who came to bring life and more abundantly, I command you to loose your grip out of that young man, out of that young woman, out of that young kid in Jesus mighty name and I prophesy into their life right now and they will live their life will have a meaning they will not die and they will not blow their brains off and they will not take their life they will not waste their life they will not wreck their life but they lay it down and Jesus will pick it up and use it for his glory in the name of Jesus Christ